Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So, I have to be honest, I struggled with this sermon. Not because the text was hard, but because I don't know you yet. And you don't know me yet. I found myself saying, oh man, I can't wait until the sermon is done. At least that way it'll be the first time out of the way. And, you know, after the first one's done, it's always easy, right? And then I found myself saying, well, man, I can't wait until this term is done. This is a tough term. <laughs> well, maybe the semester. The semester, once the semester is done, oh no, then we're moving. Well, I can't wait until Christmas break. We're going to go home to Utah and see my family, or we're going to go and see Noah's family up in Pittsburgh. And let's face it, family always makes things feel better. Well, then I can't wait until the end of this year, and I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, that I can't wait didn't get me anywhere. How often do we find ourselves saying that very thing? I can't wait. I can't wait for this sermon to be done. I can't wait to get that next job. I can't wait until I have a raise. I can't wait until I'm out of debt. And I cannot wait until this election is done. <laughs> I can't wait. So that sentiment of I can't wait is exactly what our letter from Jeremiah is saying to the exiles in Babylon. Hear what it says. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the ex amongst the exiles and the priests and the prophets and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried off to exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. There's a couple of things that we need to unpack there. One, they're able to send letters from Jerusalem to Babylon. So they're not being held captive. They're just in a new place. Now, there are prophets out there in Babylon. One of the things that you'll read in other places of Jeremiah, there's false prophets saying, Babylon is going to fall. And there's lots of them. So we have a bunch of people in exile. They're outside of their comfort zone because they're in a brand new land and probably speaking a brand new language and with a bunch of people they don't understand. And now there's prophets telling them that the house is going to fall down on their heads. Of course they're saying, I want to go home. Well, they got an answer. It's going to be a while. So you better make the best of it. So how do we make the best of it? Well, Jeremiah says, build a house, settle down, live in your house, plant a garden, and eat of the fruit of your garden. Have sons and daughters and marry them off that you can increase your numbers. You're in it for the long haul, so make the best of it. Now, interesting, so I've turned into a bit of a Hebrew geek my first year in seminary. And that is a thing. Um, and I realized I, I was going to go dig into this text, and I expected to find very complicated language and very directive grammatical things in there, or maybe some poetic language that referenced back to the Tanakh or to other prophets, because that happens a lot. But there was none of that. The Hebrew here is very straightforward, and that never happens in Hebrew. Jeremiah is telling us, he's telling in this letter, in no uncertain terms, live your lives. Whatever that takes, get up and build your house and live your lives. So let me ask this, what do we do when we run into difficulties? Some of them tough, some of them easy, some of them big, some of them small. But what do we do when we run into difficulties? Do we go into a screeching halt? Or do we find strength in God's words to us and believe in our hearts 
that we are here for a reason. We always have to find that way forward. We have to find a way to continue to live a fruitful and vital life. So get up and live. I know that sounds like a really easy thing to do, right? Not so much. We live in a complicated world. We live in a world where we hear of strife and discontent around the world in our Facebook feeds. We hear it on the news. We hear it in our politics. We hear it all over. And because we hear it from every corner, it feels like it's in our backyard. So I want to do something about what I'm hearing in the news. Now, I have to be honest. When I hear that, when I hear about strife happening in Syria or a shooting of an unarmed man in, South Carol or in Charlotte, North Carolina, and the protests that came from that, and all of the other feeds that we have coming into us, I want to do something. I want to get up and I want to do something. And I find myself thinking if I could just talk about it more, if I could just think about it more, if I could just analyze it more, if I could just, if I could just. And what happens when that analysis goes too far? Well, I tell you, in my old job, we used to call that analysis paralysis. It's pretty apt. We get so wrapped up in thinking about these problems that we can't really do much about from here that we don't take a step. <coughs> maybe, maybe there are steps that we can take, but how? Well, we actually have the answer right here in Jeremiah. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which, you ha which I have carried you. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. So sometimes we get really stuck in those big pictures and all that stuff that we see on Fox News or CNN or MSNBC, whichever news channel is yours, and we forgot, forget to look right under our own noses. The things that we can affect right here in the today and in the now. Are there things that we are not doing in the today and now because we are simply overwhelmed? Are there injustices in your own backyard that we see every day but we just don't feel like there is something that we can do because all of it is too much? Are we holding back blessings and thanksgivings for the folks that are with us today in these pews and in our families and all around us because we are overwhelmed by the amount of stuff. What can we do? Well, so now as I was preparing to wrap this sermon up, I realized that this sermon really comes down to not, or the Jeremiah letter comes down to not losing hope. But to get up wherever we are and just do it. Now, I know this comes down to, and it sounds like there's a whole lot of platitudes here. Get up and smell the roses and you know, don't miss the forest for the trees. And I could go on, but yeah, is that so bad? Maybe we just didn't hear it first. Just like Jeremiah said, and I'm paraphrasing here, yeah, y'all are in Babylon and it ain't great, but you have a life to live. I got a plan for you. Get up and live. And live like it matters. Because it does. Amen? Amen. Amen.